What's up everybody? Welcome back. This is Forgo and today I'm going to give you the top 10 best awakened characters to fight against Null, starting off with Dr. Octopus. Now this is one underrated character right here. This is a character that doesn't get talked about hardly at all that can actually take on Null. Dr. Octopus can absolutely put in quite a bit of work against Null. In fact, you don't even need a CTP of Rage like what I have. I have this currently equipped because I use him in ABX, although Bullseye is actually a better choice then Dr. Octopus, especially with Rage, I actually want to equip this, put it on Bullseye, and then Awaken and Transcend Bullseye, which I don't have yet. But he is a great character for it. Uh, however, it will be difficult to do solos. He does kind of lack a little bit of survivability, but Null really isn't that difficult to keep your characters alive as long as you know the, all the patterns of Null. And Octopus is really strong because he does have the increased damage by 200% for one attack on his third skill. That's freaking massive. That is a massive attack buff. And he does play really well with the CTP of energy. Lots of people would use him in ABX back in the day and just use a regular prog. And he would put in some serious, serious work. Really great character. Not the best, but really good for it. And then ranking in at number nine, we have Gwynnum. Now Gwynnum here, I do have her awakened, but I don't have her transcendent. But shout out to my buddy Victorious Gaming. He actually put out a video a while back showing Gwynnum and Dr. Octopus with a 30% physical attack leadership doing null. And that's something to keep in mind when you're playing with all these characters, whether they're tier 3 or awakened, is that a lot of times you're going to be switching your characters in and out, tagging them in and out when you're fighting against null because there's times where null does a certain attack and you want to switch out your character so they don't die and also so you can do more damage over time throughout the fight. And Gwynnum and Dr. Octopus are those kinds of characters. They're not going to do like complete solos, or maybe they will, depending on your cards. I have no crafted cards. I have no pierce in my cards. So maybe that would make that would make a massive difference. But Gwynnum is just really a great character. She plays really well with a CTP of energy or with a regular damage proc. Very easy to play. She also has a damage built-in damage proc on her fifth skill, just like Dr. Octopus has on his third skill. She gets a nice all attack buff by 30%. She also has a massive plus 1.5% damage accumulation. That is a nutso damage accumulation. And she has a heal. So this is a character you don't even need a healing striker for, which is nice. And you can just play with a regular damage prop. Great character. And then we have Valkyrie. And some of you might be wondering, why is Valkyrie ranked number eight? Well, Valkyrie is an ABX meta. As a matter of fact, you can use her on two different ABX days with Moon Knight and then with Combat Female Day. She is amazing. But the thing about this character is you have to play with the Rage if you really want optimal damage out of this character. I tried using a CTP of Energy against Null with her. I was not impressed. She can definitely put in work, but the Rage is so much better. And a lot of people are going to use her in ABX and probably have a Rage on her anyways because she's just better. And the main reason is because you have to let the fist skill play out. You have to let her draw out the Pegasi, let them come in, and then the proc, this buff applies, which sucks. I wish this thing applied immediately. It would make her so much better and so much easier to use with a damage proc. However, if you're playing with a proc, you got to cancel the skill or use it in the next rotation. It can really be a pain to try to get this pro buff and play with a proc. But she is a solid character. And she does have this amazing passive. The decreased damage received from supervillains by 25%, increased damage to supervillains by 50%, and the ignore target dodge rate by 30%. She is a great character. And you know, I mean, when I use her, I mainly just use her for this support when it comes to Null. I do a little damage now and again, but mainly just to support. And that's why she's ranked where she is. She's a terrific character, but she'd be ranked a lot higher if she would play better with an actual damage proc, and do just a bit more damage against Null. Then we have Bullseye, super underrated character. This guy can do absolute complete solos against Null. And the funny thing about Bullseye is, you know, when you look at his kit, like you look at his kit, you know, all defense down, that doesn't work against Null. Okay, nothing there. Okay, we have a 35% all attack buff. All right, 35% all attack buff, right? But... That's really the only buff he really has. And then, of course, he's got the ignore target dodge rate uh, passive, which is nuts on top of this leadership. That is crazy. So you put him in the leadership, 
He always has it. And the best thing about him is, say you put a CTP of energy on this guy. Well, then you're going to have Max Ignore Dodge even when you don't use him as a leadership because of his tier 2 passive. But he just, even though he doesn't have a lot of buffs, you know, he's got the 25% increase of all attack here on his uniform, the guy just does insane damage. Like I said, he can do complete solos. However, you will want to play with a CTP of rage with him that's kind of the thing about him i don't know how well he plays with a proc i have no idea i don't have him awakened so it's hard for me to know and then we have number six which is medusa medusa can do 100 percent solo on her own against null and she can do it with a ctp of energy or even with a regular damage proc medusa is freaking awesome on top of that she also has an amazing self-buffing leadership, and she's also a great support for combat or Universal he Female Hero Day. And she's a great support for Black Bolt because of this increased damage to Supervillain Faction by 45%. And then she also has this nice 35% increase of all attack buff here. She has the Ignore Target Dodge Rate on her 4 skill, which is nice. It's nice to have that extra 30% Ignore Target Dodge Rate. And then her third skill gives him a massive 70% all attack and then 45% crit rate buff. She is just a great character. She also has invincibility on this fifth skill, which is really nice against Null because he can guard break you quite often. Terrific character and especially with a damage proc. Wonderful. Then you have Mystique. Now Mystique, you might be wondering, like Mystique, why is she ranked number five? Well, she's ranked number five, one, because if you want to play her optimally, she needs a CTP of Rage. If you use her with a damage proc, you're going to notice a stark difference between fighting Null compared to a Rage. She can do 100% solo with a Rage. I have no idea if she can do it with an energy. Now, against regular world bosses, she is insane. But we're talking about fighting Null. And the Rage is really the only way to go if you're going to use this character against Null. And the reason being is, you have to let her skills do a bunch of hits. You got to let this fist skill play out. That gives you this 40% attack buff, which is absolutely nuts. And then you also got to let the force skill play out a little bit too. That gives you the 45% all attack buff and the crit rate buff by 45%. And then she also has this insane damage accumulation plus 1.5%. That is crazy. Just like Gwenom. Only Mystique is much stronger than Gwenom. Uh, she is absolutely insane for Null. I mean, she does have the crazy all defense sound. I'm not really focusing on all defense sound with these characters because I'm talking about fighting Null. And all defense sound just doesn't apply. Freaking nuts, so character. Awesome. Oh, yeah. And I forgot to mention a self buffing leadership on top of that. Then you have Beta Ray Bill. Now, Beta is freaking super strong. You do one shots in regular world boss. Uh, he is a monster against Null for sure. And he can play really well with a CTP of energy or regular damage proc. I'm using a CTP of judgment because it's, it's a little bit better. But he still does play really well with a CTP of energy or a regular obelisk. And, you know, if you have ignored dodge on your obelisk, that's really going to make him a lot better. And the reason he plays so well with a damage proc is because you can just cancel his skills. Like a lot of these characters... You can just you cancel the skills. He also has invincibility, which is really good against Null. He has the 40% attack buff, 40% crit rate buff. He has the damage proc, which is also nice. You know, you see a common trend amongst a lot of these characters. You see damage procs. You see lots of attack buffs. And he also has a self-buffing leadership. Beta is awesome. He is a pretty expensive character, but he's well worth the cost, in my opinion. And then for the top three... Now, there is an argument to be made about which one of these characters is better. I can tell you Moon Knight is definitely more useful in the game since he's an ABX meta. Uh, he's just going to be more useful for most players. But we're talking about Null. And I do give Gambit a slight edge against Moon Knight. And we'll talk about why here in a second. But the reason Moon Knight is so strong is because he has this insane 50% all attack buff. And he has a freaking 100% damage proc. On his third skill just like beta ray bill and he's got insane heals on two different skills so you don't have to worry about survivability with him and he plays super super well with a damage proc in fact i would argue that he plays a lot better with a damage proc than he does a ctp of rage yes i know if you do a good run with the ctp of rage and the rage proc exactly where you want it you'll do more damage with the rage that's true 
But how many times do you have to do that to get the optimal damage? Depending on your luck, it could be a little or it could be a lot. With this proc, easy, easy and super consistent and super easy to play character. And something to note about my Moon Knight is I have Odin's Blessings and I also have Mythic Urus on them. And the reason I show you that is to show you on Gambit's build, I just have five star energy attack Urus. I did a stage four null clear, stage four solo with no support and no crafted cards. Just this guy on his own. That is a tough clear to do and he did it. I actually am using Gambit on stage two solos every day. No support, no nothing. Freaking insane character and that's thanks to ignore target dodge rate leadership. That's also thanks to all attack buff here by 25%. And then the third skill also giving him the 30% increase of all attack. And he's just another super easy character to play with a regular damage proc. You also will be canceling his skills super, super fast. You know, the characters that you can cancel skills super fast with, they just play well with procs. And Gambit is one of those characters. And I do think he does a little bit more damage. But the reason I put him above Moon Knight, as far as against Null, is their damage is pretty similar. I do think Gambit's a little bit stronger. However, Gambit can actually stall Null. And I want to give a big shout out to Cynic Alex for putting up that video showing Gambit actually, like Null, when he goes over, he goes in his second phase. Null will start walking towards you. And before he swipes the sword, you can actually use your fist skill here because it's a solid eye frame and move away from Null, right? And keep Null from swiping his sword at you. And you can keep running around the arena and keep Null just walking towards you, walking towards you, walking towards you. What this does is it keeps Null from doing his purple attacks to you. And it also enables you to do more damage faster, do more damage over time to Null. This really, really helps Gambit something fierce. And you can actually do this twice in the fight in two different phases. In the second phase and in the third phase, you can do this against Null. And that's a big reason why I put him above Moon Knight. Moon Knight has to pretty much sit up there and face tank Null because of the way he's set up. Doesn't mean, I mean he's freaking amazing. I got him in the top three. But Gambit can actually stall that, which is nice. And then number one, and this is really no shocker or surprise, is Moonstone, who is a blast, who is an ABX meta for Blast Villain Day. And she also plays super, super well with a proc, but she just has insane buffs. You can cancel all of her skills. Matter of fact, her rotation is literally four, five, awaken skill, three. And that's it. It is easy. You know, she has this insane damage accumulation plus 1% on her four skill and a damage proc. Then she also has a 40% attack buff and crit rate buff here on the fifth skill. She also has a 30% attack buff on her third skill and a heal, which is nice. And then she has her awakened skill with the 70% damage proc. Of course, all the other buff increases that a lot of awakened skills have. Freaking insane character. And I would argue probably the best character for Null or definitely one of the best in the game against him. Now, a couple honorable mentions I want to throw out there are Amadeus Cho. Amadeus, I've seen him do a clear against Null, but they were using Cyclops leadership and they were using an extra support. So I don't think he's the best, to be perfectly honest, but I do think he can definitely do it. I definitely think he can put in work. However, you're going to want a CTP of Rage on this guy. And that's, I mean, his damage will be good. He's a god against regular world boss. But against Null, since the all defense down doesn't apply, I mean, that really hurts a lot of these characters, you know, without having that all defense down from their regular skills really hurts them against Null. They really rely on a lot of raw damage and Amadeus is definitely strong and he can definitely put in work there, but I don't think he's in the top 10. And then you have Ares. Now Ares is a character that I'm actually very curious about. I've seen him do a clear against Null, but it was on the APK. So it's hard for me to judge how strong he really is because I just don't know what kind of cards they had in the APK. But man, when you look at this guy's kit, you know, he gets, you know, he'll have 300% critical damage at times, which is nuts. I mean, he's going to have, you know, he's got the 40% attack buff, 40% crit rate buff. He has invincibility, which is very good against Null. 
You know, he does have all defense down, but it doesn't apply. But I mean, just seeing these attack buffs, seeing that crit rate buff, and, you know, you look at the awakened skill, I just wonder how good he would be. I don't see a damage, I don't see any kind of damage proc on here. That would have been nice. But I just wonder how good he could do. All these other characters, unfortunately, aren't going to be very good against Null. You got four characters here that don't even have uniforms, which is a sh cry and shame that Netmarble did that. Total freaking joke. The Warriors of the Sky, terrible for it. Red Skull and Red Guardian, I have no idea how good they would be, or Nightcrawler, to be perfectly honest, but I don't think they're going to be very good against Null. I haven't seen any videos, I haven't seen anyone talk about them at all against that character. So let me know how you're all feeling about my top 10 picks for Null, and I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you for watching. Y'all take care and have a good one.